Hey everybody, welcome to this video with myself, Sarah Lean. I'm excited to have you join me with this live stream that we're going to be talking about Azure dashboards on. Whether you're new to Azure or you're a seasoned pro, we've got something for everyone in today's session. Now, we've got a packed agenda and we aim to show you how to leverage Azure dashboards to gain insights, monitor resources and streamline your workflows. We'll talk about the theory and then we'll get hands on with some demos. And of course, I want to hear from you as well. So if you've got any questions along the way, please feel free to drop them in the chat or the comments box and we'll, we'll, we'll pick them up from there. Whether you're a beginner looking for guidance or an experienced Azure user, um, we have some tips and tricks to show or share with you today. So um, yeah, we want this to be an interactive experience as well, folks. Um, but before we jump into the nitty gritty, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring the notification bell so that you get um, notifications of any future content as well. So let's get started, folks. So what are Azure dashboards? Azure dashboards are a great tool for teams to monitor the applications and infrastructure in real time. Um, the customizable nature of the platform means that you can build dashboards that are tailored to your team's requirements or your personal requirements. Whether you're monitoring your web apps, your services or your infrastructure, Azure dashboards allows you to quickly identify issues and take action to resolve them or just gather some information about your environment as well. And by sharing the dashboards that you create with your team members or even the wider community, everyone can be on the same page and you can grow that repository of dashboards that you have. All the dashboards that you create are automatically private when they are created and each user can create up to 100 private dashboards within their account or their Azure environment. If you publish and share a dashboard with other users in your organization, the shared dashboard is implemented as an Azure resource in your subscription and doesn't actually count towards that private dashboard limit. So how do you create a dashboard? Let's actually jump over into the Azure portal and take a look at that as well. So here I am in my Azure portal um, and you can either search for the dashboard hub here. So you can type in dashboard up here um, and find it. I've got no dashboards at the moment. So to be able to create my first dashboard, what I do is actually click on get started. And here are a bunch of pre-created dashboards that I have um, the ability to actually use for myself. So I have the custom one and we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. But these are ones that Microsoft or Azure have created for you to get you started and to kind of start those creative juices and the learning process for you. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use one of these pre-made dashboards. So if we click on Azure Inventory, we're asked if we want to give the dashboard a name. So I'm going to call it Inventory. Um, and make it simple for myself. It'll take a few minutes for that dashboard to actually um, pick up and create. And you can see here, we've already got a bunch of information um, for our um, dashboards created for us. And instantly we can see I've got 44 resources inside my <laughs> Azure environment. Um, and here I've got a breakdown of it. So I've got um, six storage accounts. I've got some SQL Server instances or their Azure Arc SQL Server instances. Here I've got, again, some extensions with my Azure Arc environment. I've been doing a lot with Azure Arc recently. So that's what I've got um, there so that mostly these resources are here. I've also got like a text section in this dashboard. So this can give you a headline or some information. As you can see here, it's explaining what the next section is and so forth and so forth. We've got tons of information pre-built into us. What we can do with this pre-built dashboard is actually start to edit it uh, and manipulate it to make it look like what we want. So if we click on these the little ellipses here, we have the option to configure these tile settings and so we can, call it something different. So at the moment it's called um, count of all my res Azure resources. So let's say all my Azure resources. And I can click OK and save. And that changes that title for me here. If I go back in, I can change a bit more. So you can see here I've got filter settings. So at the moment it's filtered on all my Azure resources. If we start to look at it, so if we say location, for example, um, we can pick a region. So if we want a count of all of our um, UK South region, I don't know if I've got any in this, but let's apply that filter. 
And you can see I've only got two resources in the UK South. The rest of those 44 resources that we had previously were obviously in different locations and we can you know, change what's happening there as well. Now I clicked on that um, tile and what this is actually taking me into is the Azure resource graph. And this is the query that's being used to actually display that tile. So let's take a minute and just explain what Azure resource graph is first of all. So Azure Resource Graph is a service built into the Azure platform that helps you query your resources and subscription information. It can be used to explore governance requirements or pull together information regarding resources into one view. And that's ultimately what's happening within your dashboard. You're issuing a Resource Graph query and then um, pulling that together inside a visual aid. And that's ultimately what um, dashboard is actually showing you. Now, the language you use inside your Azure Resource Graph is actually based on the Coastal Query Language, or KQL, that is used within Azure Data Explorer. So it's a new language that you have to learn, and there are some syntax errors and, and things like that they have to be aware of. Um, but I've actually got a blog on my website, so on my blog at www.techielast.com. I've actually got a blog on how to get started with Azure Resource Graph if you haven't been using it. So definitely check that out um, if you aren't aware of Azure Resource resource graph um, and that will help get, get you started and um, if we flip back into the portal we can see here that that um, query that showed us what was in our graph so the two resources or the 44 resources depending on the filter we were using is actually just using this coastal query so summarize resources equal count so it's a very simple query there that we can do if we take a more advanced query, so if we grab one of my Azure Arc queries that I have pre-built, so if we pick on this one, and if we paste that into our Azure um, resource graph query, we can get no results. Well, that's not very helpful here for me. Let me pick another query. It might be that all of my Azure Arc resources are switched off. So let me try this one. Yeah, okay. So let's go back a sec. If we take one of the pre-built queries actually instead, because I think all my Azure Arc resources are turned off. Um, let's pick one. So here's a bit of a longer query. So um, it's actually um, just pulling out all the list of our resources. So if we run this query, we get a bunch of results here. And what we can do if we are building our own resource graph queries, we can actually then pin that to our dashboard. So if we click on pin to dashboard, we get this icon up that asks us where we want to pin it to and which dashboard we want to pin it to. So if we click private, which is the one that we created, our inventory one, and we've only got the inventory one. So let's pick pin. And then if we head on over to our inventory graph, it should be down, down here. So this is our query here that we just took from the resource graph and we added into our dashboard. So you can build up your queries and your dashboards either from pre-built um, dashboards that you have and add on to that, or you can make your own Azure resource graph queries and then start to build them in to your resource, into your dashboard, sorry. And then from here, you can start to customize it again. We can go into customized tile settings. We can give it a name. So list all, list of Azure resources. We can give it a subtitle and um, we can just say created by Sarah. We can click apply and we can change that there. We can also change the size of these tiles. So if we click on edit, we get a visual um, way of pulling it. So you can create it so that it's um, horizontal rather than vertical, or you can squish it into just four or five tiles so that you can move it along and you can save it. So you can build up this so that it looks like what you need it to look like um, and be able to, 
to configure it and customize that dashboard depending on what you want. Now, as I said, you have the ability to create your own dashboards, but the thing that you want to do potentially is actually share it with your audience. You want to build that and give it to your colleagues. So after configuring a dashboard, you can publish it and share it with others inside your organization. And when you share a dashboard, you can control who can view it using Azure resource, um, sorry, Azure role-based access control. And you can assign roles either to a single user or a group of users. Um, and this is key, again, within an organization, you don't maybe don't want everybody having access to the dashboard or you want to be able to give folks the level of access that they need for the dashboard. Um, so from an access control point of view, dashboards are no different from other resources such as virtual machines or storage accounts. Published dashboards are implemented as Azure resources. So each Azure um, dashboard exists as a manageable item contained inside a resource group within your subscription. With Azure RBAC, you can assign user roles um, depending on different scopes. So you can have a management group level, subscription group level, um, resource group resource group level or as a resource individually. But the thing to remember is Azure RBAC permissions are inherited from higher levels down to the individual resource. So in many cases, you may already have users assigned to roles within that subscription that gives them access to the published dashboard. And they may already actually have um, admin rights to be able to change that dashboard and interact with it and, and, and customize it a bit more beyond that as well. So it's something to think about that the permissions are inherited from top level down into your Azure dashboards as well. Now, one of the things that you're doing, if we jump over into the portal, we'll be able to share it for you and show you how you can actually do that. So this is this dashboard that I have. If I click on the share icon here in the top um, panel, I get the access to control where I'm going to share it. So this is the um, dashboard name. This is a subscription name, or I could put it into another subscription that I have access to. Um, and we have the option to publish it into a, a dashboard resource group, or I can create my own resource group um, can, that will be um, following my organization's kind of naming convention. I'm happy for um, this to actually automatically create my dashboard resource group, and I'm going to pick a location. So we're going to say UK South. And again, I can create tags here as well. So I can say created by, and we can put Sarah. And again, follow your organizational kind of um, best practices here so that you can understand what's happening with this dashboard. And if we publish that, it's automatically published um, for us and it's now shared. Um, and we can unshare that if we ever wanted to undo that. Um, if we go back into our dashboard hub, we can see here that this is now a shared dashboard that we have access to or other people within our organization have access to. If we go back into it, instead of the sharing button now that it's um, published, we actually have managed sharing. So we can do the unshare, like I said, or you have the access control. So if we wanted to give more granular access, we have that RBAC um, control plane here and we can um, add in any users that we want to give more granular control to as well. So that's something to have a look at as well. Now, what happens if you see a dashboard that someone has created, maybe on the internet, um, or you know, um, maybe there are wider community ones that you want to import? You actually can import it. Now, this is something that's pretty cool, and it's able to do. I've been creating a lot of dashboards for Azure Arc, um, and I've been able to share that with other people. Um, there is the import feature as well. So let's have a look at how you can actually import someone else's um, dashboard into your environment. So back inside our dashboard um, hub, what we're going to do is create a fresh one so as we can import this um, additional um, dashboard in. So we create um, a new dashboard and we're going to click on create a custom dashboard. Now if we cancel all of this down we just get this blank dashboard that's called my dashboard. Now I'm going to grab my Azure Arc um, dashboard 
And it's here available on GitHub if you want to grab it. So if you want to, to visualize some of your Azure Arc dashboards, you can do here. It's in a JSON file, so you'll have to grab this code and save it to your local machine to be able to import it into your Azure portal. Um, I've already done that. So back in my dashboard, I've got an upload button. So if I click on upload, I have my JSON file that I want to import. So I'll just open that up. And in a few minutes, I actually get all of that dashboard. So it's pre-built for me where I've got an overview of my Azure Arc environment. I've got my ESU status. I've got SQL Server account. And you can see I can then either use this dashboard as it is, or I can build on that dashboard. So I have a great starting point for building an, an additional view onto it for me. Um, and that's that's key to be able to, to you know, share your environment and be able to grow from just not only your dashboards that you're creating inside your organization, but custom um, dashboards that the community are also making as well. Now, what about actually exporting a dashboard? If you've created a dashboard and you want to share it with a colleague in another organization, or if you want to share it again, maybe with the community, like I've done on my GitHub profile, you can do that as well. So if we dive on back into our Azure environment, we will to see that here. Um, so this is the dashboard that I imported. If I want to export it, I can click on the export button and I can click on download. And that just downloads that JSON file for us. And we can then share that either through email, through GitHub, however you meant to do that. So it's pre-built in that you can actually do that. Um, so it's really easy to be able to import or export um, a dashboard within your environment and share them beyond your organization or even share them inside your organization, depending on how your Azure environments are all set up. One thing that I have been looking at is how to programmatically deploy a dashboard because let's face it, we don't all just work inside the portal and being able to upload files and things like that can sometimes be problematic, especially if you want to be within a, a governance environment or if you want to um, do it automatically so that it's repeatable and a consistent approach. Um, and that's something that I've been looking at. Um, so I've been looking at how to do it with Azure Bicep and I haven't quite figured out how to do it with Bicep at the moment. It, there seems some uh, nuances in there, but something that I did figure out how to do is how to do it with Terraform. So again, if you head on over to my blog, so www.techielast.com, I have a blog on how to deploy a dashboard using Terraform so you can automate that process and keep it compliant within your environment. Um, so do check that out as well, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening um, to this stream. And hopefully you've had an overview into how to use Azure dashboards. We covered off what they are, how to create one, how to build on one. We touched on how you can use Azure Resource Graph to have a look at the, the queries behind what's being visualized inside your dashboards. And we've also looked at how to import and export your dashboards as well, folks. But yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully this video has been useful um, to you. And please do hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, uh, and remember to hit the notification bell so that you find out when I release new content as well. So again, thank you folks, and I appreciate your support.